In this video, we're going to show you how to work with a viewport and how to scale drawings in paper space. I want to turn your attention to the box inside the white canvas, the one that has the grid in it. Now if you click on the perimeter of this box, you're going to see blue grips in the corners of the box. And this is called a viewport. As the name suggests, the viewport allows you to view the drawings that you drew in model space while you're in paper space. It is also the entity that allows us to scale our drawings onto a piece of paper or the white canvas that you see on your screen. So remember, if I draw a building at 50 foot by 60 foot in model space, there's no possible way that that drawing, if drawn at real world scale, could fit on any principal piece of paper. So we scale the drawing down so it can fit onto a piece of paper when we print it. So let me demonstrate how all of this works. Let's go back to model space. And let's draw a box at 15 foot by 10 foot using the line command. Remember we always locate the XY axis first and draw up and to the right of it. And I'm going to start the line command somewhat close to the XY axis. Maybe I'll go up just like about right here. Looks good. I'm going to extend my cursor out, get that polar tracking going, and I want 15 foot, so I type 15 apostrophe, enter. Oh, looks like my line went off the screen, so when that happens, I hit escape. I use the zoom extends tool. Now that line is on my screen, but I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more so that I can see it in a better context. Restart the line command snap the first point to the end of this line, go straight up, get that polar tracking, 10 foot, so 10 apostrophe, enter, oh, went off the screen, but this time I'm just going to hold my mouse wheel down and move it down just so that I can see it. There we go, 15 foot, and I'm going to snap it right back into place. There it is, and escape. So I have my 15 foot box showing on the screen. Let's go back to paper space if I want to print it. So now you can see that there is the line, part of the box at least is showing. Now some of you might not have any of the box showing, so I don't want you to panic, it's okay. We just need to adjust the viewport scale so that we can see what you drew in model space. But before we do that, let's get rid of the gridded boxes in the viewport because too many lines make me start seeing cross-eyed a little. So how we do that is we double click inside of the viewport and you'll notice that the viewport box, the perimeter got really bold and that just indicates that I've activated the viewport. I can come down here to the very bottom of the screen where there is the uh, grid mode. It's blue so that means it's on. If I click it, it will turn the grid off, therefore turning the icon itself white, which is perfect. Now that we're inside the viewport, I can either use my zoom extends tool because the navigation bar activates when the viewport activates. I'm going to do that just like we did in model space and now you'll see the box is completely inside of my viewport. I can zoom out just a little with my mouse wheel so that you can see the box that we drew in model space. Here's the XY axis just to kind of give me information. It looks pretty cool, right? Now I'm going to double click outside of the box. So now I can be in paper space. So let me demonstrate that again. Clicking inside of the box allows me to adjust the picture inside. Clicking outside of the box, double clicking outside of the box I should say, allows you to go back into paper space mode where you can actually start working with that. So I always think of the viewport itself as kind of like a picture frame. So right now I can use these grips to adjust how large I want my picture frame to be. So let's do something kind of like this. I can make it as small or as weird looking as I want to. But once I double click inside, it's like I'm changing the way that the picture is showing. Like I can change how big the picture inside the frame is going to be. So if that helps you a little bit with understanding the viewport and what it's doing. Now if I want to scale this to let's say a half inch scale or half inch equals one foot zero inches, um, I either need to click on the perimeter 
of the viewport or I can double click inside the viewport. I basically have to tell CAD, hey, this is the viewport that I want to scale. I can come down here and you'll see a series of decimal numbers. Um, this is the scale area and I can click on it to access all different types of scales already programmed into AutoCAD. So if I want this to be at half inch scale, I just kind of come down a little bit. There's a little scroll bar right here and I hit half inch equals one foot. Your viewport automatically updates itself so that now it shows the rectangle at the correct scale. The idea is that if I print this to a printer, I can take my trusty architectural scale, flip it to the half inch scale side of the ruler, and I can measure this to be 15 foot by 10 foot. So do you see how this revolutionized drafting? I mean, no longer do you have to spend countless hours hovered over a drawing table trying to draw something at the correct scale. You can now draw the object and with a click of the mouse, immediately change the scale to whatever size that you want. It's pretty awesome what this did for our field. And here's a little tip for everyone. I'm gonna double click outside. I'm gonna zoom in so much that I can't see the border of that viewport anymore. I know that I'm in it because I have the navigation bar. And let's say that I want to scale this, but all of a sudden I realize I can't double click outside because I don't have a border of that viewport in my box. Well, don't panic. If you ever get stuck inside of a viewport, just type PS enter and that will unactivate all viewports and you can go back to your paper space view. So again, just to demonstrate, I'm going to click on the perimeter of the viewport this time, come down here, and I want that rectangle scaled at half inch equals one foot. Now it kind of zoomed off the page a little bit, so I'm going to double click inside. I'm going to use the pan tool, and I'm just going to move it so that it kind of centers it again right there. And double click outside the viewport, or actually I'm going to hit escape to escape the pan command and then I'm going to double click outside. And there we go. Now let's say I'm interested in printing this rectangle at this half inch scale. Now before I print it, I can double check that it's going to print correctly by doing a plot preview. And I have an icon up here in my handy dandy shortcuts tool uh, for plot preview. If you don't have it, you can come here to this little arrow and see if there is a plot preview. If you don't have that option, the other way to find plot preview is to go to the big red A, go down to where it says print, and I hover my mouse over the arrow and it brings up the options, and right here is plot preview. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and you'll see the screen changed a little bit. We still have the gray background with the white canvas, but our ribbon disappeared. Well, this is the plot preview mode screen, and so anything that you see here is exactly how your piece of paper is going to look when it prints. So we see the viewport, and we see the rectangle that we drew in model space. Now, it's, it's actually considered bad manners to show your viewport on any drawing. So I'm going to show you how the CAD experts keep their viewports uh, from printing. To exit the plot preview mode, I'm going to click the circle up here with a little X on it. It's going to take me back to paper space. I'm going to click on the home tab and I'm going to go to the layers panel. Now you should see a large icon that says layer properties. Um, I don't want to get into too much detail right now about layers, but usually when we draw in CAD, we actually draw our lines and shapes with what's called layers. Uh, think of it as drawing with different pens or pencils that have different colors, and layers actually allow us to have control over our drawings. Now, like I said, I'll get into this in a future video, but for now you're going to get a little taste of what layers can do. So let's click on this layer properties. You'll see a toolbar pop up called the layer manager. And I'm going to open it by just clicking on this uh, little icon right here, the auto hide, and that'll keep it open. 
What we want to do is we want to create a layer specifically for viewports. Right now you see there's only one layer, it's called layer zero. That's the layer that you've actually been drawing in this whole time. Normally there's going to be anywhere from 10 to 50 different layers that you'll be working with. But we want to create a layer specifically for viewports. So in the CAD world, that layer is called def points. And we need to create this layer as AutoCAD for whatever reason does not default with a layer showing. To create a def points layer, we're going to click on the icon that looks like a stack of paper with a little ball of sunshine on it. This is the create a new layer command. And when you click on it, a new layer pops up right underneath layer zero and it's ready to be renamed. So we're going to call it def points. So it's D E F P O I N T S. I'm not going to capitalize anything, just def points. Let's also make this layer a distinctive color. So I'm going to click off here real quick and I'm going to click on this uh, black square that you saw and this is the color palette that AutoCAD uses. Now typically we only draw with these colors uh, that are separated from the main colors. But for viewports, I don't want them to look like any of the colors that I typically draw with. So I'm going to select this orange color right here, index color 40. I'm going to click and hit OK. So now anytime that I draw with def points, it's going to be this orange color. AutoCAD actually recognizes the name of this layer and it's automatically going to update the layer so that it never prints. So do you see how the print icon is all grayed out? That means that you're going to see the layer on your screen but it will never ever print. All of your viewports should be assigned to the layer def points. And this is, to my knowledge, the only layer name that AutoCAD automatically recognizes and updates when you type this specific name. So you're going to have to name and adjust all your other layers to how you want them to print. But again, please don't worry about that right now. We're going to get into a lot more details in Unit 2. Uh, for now, this is just how CAD professionals make their viewports hide from printing. So I'm going to go ahead and click out of Layer Property Manager now that we have def points created. But now what I need to do is I need to assign the viewport that I currently have to that layer. And we do this by selecting the viewport perimeter, like that. And we're going to go up to the home tab under the layers panel. And this time you see a scroll bar with layer zero attached to it. We're going to click that scroll bar and we're going to choose def points. And I know it updated it because my line is now orange. And when I go to plot preview, I do not see the viewport anymore. It's hiding from printing. Cool, right? So we're going to exit out of the preview window and we're going to go back to paper space here. Now let's say I want to add another drawing or I want to show another view of the rectangle that I just did. We can actually add viewports to a paper space. We can add as many as we want to. I'm going to take this viewport. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. I'm going to do something a little more like this. Double click inside. Uh, I'm going to zoom out just a little so that you can still see the rectangle. And what I want to do is I want to add another viewport. To do that I type viewports, enter, and a window pops up. This is the viewport window. And to add just a single viewport, and there are lots to choose from, I'm just going to click on single. This is the one I used nine out of ten times. And then I'm going to leave everything else defaulted to where it's at, and then I'm going to hit OK. Notice that my command bar and my cursor are saying, hey, you need to specify a first corner of your viewport. So I'm going to click, and now the box is attached to my cursor until I click the second point, creating that viewport. I need to assign my viewport to the def point layer, and now I'll always know that that is that. So I can actually scale this to 1 8 inch and it's always good manners to keep your viewports kind of close to your drawing. We don't want viewports all the way around 
the whole perimeter, we want to make sure that we know that this viewport is assigned to that drawing. And then I can take this one and I can actually scale this to quarter inch scale. What does that do? Right there. So now I show the same box on my layout, on my paper space. One is showing it at one eighth inch scale and the other one is showing it at quarter inch scale. Pretty cool, right? So now we're starting to understand why AutoCAD calls paper space layout one down on the tabs on the bottom left hand corner. It's because you have to lay out your drawings and configure them a little uh, so that you can print them. It's kind of like how magazines do layouts. You know, they need to arrange things digitally before they actually print them. Well, it's the same with us. We're kind of like magazine editors. So if you want the boxes to show next to each other, you know, you can manipulate it around. I'm going to double click and pan this down here. And now I'm kind of figuring out how I want to lay it out. I always double check before I actually print it to make sure that it's printing what I want it to show. And we're looking good. If you choose a scale that makes the drawing uh, larger than the piece of paper, then you know you have the wrong scale. But you don't want your drawing too small either. It's all about kind of figuring out the balance that you need on the sheet. And your mentor or your boss or your instructor is going to help you kind of start to learn what scales your drawings need to be at. Now last but not least, I want to show you how to add your name and a drawing title to the sheet. Now some people like to add their names in model space, but I like to do it in paper space. If I need to scale a drawing, I don't want to have to worry too much about the text scaling with it. And then I have all these different sizes of text on my paper. Uh, by putting it on paper space, I get a little bit more control over that. I'm definitely going to go into text more in depth in the future, um, but for now we're just going to be here in paper space and I'm in paper space mode. I don't have any viewports activated or anything like that. I'm going to go to the annotate tab in the ribbon and I'm going to choose the very first command which is multi-line text. Now this is a lot like creating a text box in Microsoft Word. You're going to notice that the cursor goes into crosshair mode with the ABC next to it. That's how I know I've got the text command selected. So just like you draw a text box in Microsoft Word or just how you drew the viewport box here in paper space, you click the first place and you click a second place to start the text box. And then you'll notice that the text box option appears, the ribbon changes to adjust to the new command, and now I can start typing my name. Now if your box isn't long enough uh, for your name, uh, you can click off of the text, click on the text just once, and you'll see this arrow. You can actually make the text box a little bit larger if you need to, or this is multi-line text, so we can actually bring it down and you can continue typing down below if you want to. Now if I need to change this text, I'm going to escape. I'm going to double click on the text itself. And the way that you have to do this with AutoCAD, this is a weird little behavior, is if you need to change anything, you have to highlight it in the text box itself and then come up and I can change the font. I can change the size of the text. Um, I could change the justification. I can also retype my name. And all I need to do to exit the command is to just click off of it in an empty area on my screen. So that's text. It's really not too hard uh, and pretty easy to manage. Now what I wanted to show you is drawing titles. And every CD set that you're going to see, every single drawing gets its own title. It's just a way of organizing the CD set to make it uh, user friendly and communicate as much as possible. So to add a drawing title to your drawings, we're going to go up to the View tab. And under the Palettes panel, we're going to locate the Tool Palette. You can also type Tool Palettes if you need to. Click on the Tool Palette. This little um, toolbox appears again. We're going to make sure that the Annotation tab is selected and we're going to find the Drawing Title Imperial. Click on it 
and you'll notice that um, it's kind of hard to see with mine but there's actually a little drawing tile that attaches to my cursor so I'm going to click right below um, in interior and architectural drawings we always put our drawing tiles below what we've drawn and actually let me adjust this a little bit I'm going to take this viewport up a little bit double click inside pan my drawing up double click outside remember we always keep our viewport snug to our drawings something like that escape to move a drawing title I'm just gonna click once on it there's a little grip mark that'll help me move it I'm just gonna snap it right about there looks pretty good and hit escape now obviously we need to title this drawing and we also need to indicate what the scale is so I'm gonna double click on the words and this little editing window pops up all I have to do is if I want to change the drawing name I click on the drawing name highlight it in blue and then come down here and I can type rectangle and then I can also click on the viewport scale so right now it's saying it defaults to say scale is one to one but in all actuality I actually can't remember what the viewport size is so I'm gonna go here oh that's the quarter inch scale so I'm going to escape double click again come back here to the viewport scale and we always 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 type our scale as one quarter inches space equals space one apostrophe dash zero inches a lot of newcomers to interior design and architecture just think that we just need to say quarter inch but in all actuality you need to say quarter inch equals one foot and you also have to make sure that it says one foot dash zero inches that's just the accepted nomenclature it's what you have to do don't just leave it quarter inch equals one apostrophe one apostrophe dash zero inches and hit enter and because this is the first drawing on my sheet it's going to get the number one so I'm also going to move this one up a little bit double click inside use my pan on my mouse I'm going to try and get it to align a little bit there double click outside so that I can get my viewport a little more snug to the drawing itself always like it snug snug as a bug then I'm going to come back and do the drawing title again and this time we're going to double click on it it's also called rectangle and we're going to change the scale to 1 8 inch equals one apostrophe dash zero quotation now normally when we have two drawings this one is one and this one becomes two so I'm gonna double click again I should have done that when I was in it but I forgot two okay so now I have drawing one and I have drawing two and it looks like I even forgot to do uh, the title of this drawing I left it and this is rectangle okay now everybody has a proper way uh, that they like to show things usually what you want to have happen is you want the drawing title this line of the drawing title to encompass the entire drawing uh, including any notes or callouts or dimensions that you could have on it and to do that I just click on the drawing title grab this little arrow and I pull it just a little beyond the end of the drawing and that indicates that hey everything above this line is associated with this drawing title it's just a proper way of doing things so it looks like this little rectangle should be okay and so now we have the drawing titles underneath our drawings and we have our name on our sheet of paper and this is now ready to print in this video we talked about viewports we adjusted them we changed the layers so that they don't print we learned how to scale viewports and we worked a little with text and drawing titles